my audio video is uh, if I am visible to all of you. Yes, great, great. So, welcome to the dermatology recall session. And uh, good evening, all of you. Good evening, everyone. So, I know the questions from dermatology was not uh, very, uh, you know, a high number. We got few questions, around five to six questions from dermatology. And they are uh, good questions, nothing out of the syllabus again. So uh, let us very quickly, uh, you know, discuss the questions. I request all of you to please uh, keep updating if, uh, you know, there is any any point missing in the question or any option you feel is not correct. So please do let me know because this is a recall session. So uh, there is a possibility that there will be some questions which, you know, like I might not have uh, written here. So please uh, keep updating or keep posting on the channel, okay, or on the chat section. So the first question which we got from the dermatology was this. The question was all of the following presents as an annular uh, plaque except. So first of all, this is a very easy question. First of all, you should know what is an annular means. What do you mean by annular plaque? Now annular means uh, it has a consistency which is different at the periphery and different in the center. It is a plaque. I hope you know what is a plaque. Plaque is a horizontally elevated lesion of more than one centimeter. Now, if you see that the plaque has different consistency on the periphery and in the center, this becomes an annular plaque. And if you feel that the consistency is same throughout the plaque, okay, this becomes a discoid plaque. So, in discoid, you cannot appreciate where is the center or where is the periphery. Everything looks same. But in an annular plaque, you will see that periphery is little different from the center of the lesion. Center can be plain, can be clear, center can be crusted, center can be, uh, you know, it can present with some crust, some scar, etc. Now, Petriasis rosea, I hope everybody knows that it is an oval shaped lesion and there is a very classical scales on the periphery. So, this is a very classical annular plaque. I told you the consistency in the periphery is different from that of the center. Second is porokeratosis. What is porokeratosis? You see, uh, you know, multiple small papules which are arranged somewhat like this or they are present like this. So, this is also considered to be an annular uh, lesion. Tinea corporis, again an annular plaque where the center is clear and the periphery shows red scaly lesions. So, that is also an annular plaque. The only exception to this is urticaria. Now, I hope everybody knows what is an urticaria, what is the classical clinical lesion of urticaria known as. You get what is known as a wheel in an urticaria. What is wheel? It is a transient structure. Transient means it remains for less than 24 hours. What do you see? You see dermal edema. There is swelling in the dermis. You will have redness and all these things have an associated itching. So, please remember students that the answer to this question was option number 2. That is, urticaria will not have annular plaque. Please give me a thumbs up if, you have, uh, if this point is clear. Okay. So, all of the following present as an annular plaque except the correct answer should be urticaria if these are the options. Now, I am not sure whether the... Uh, whether they have given any picture or image to this particular question, obviously it doesn't make any sense. But you all know that what does annular means and I hope this is a very easy question. The answer is urticaria. Coming to the next question which is actually a uh, you know integrated question from pharmacology and uh, dermatology. So the question was which of the following anti leprosy medication cause pigmentation and I think it's a very very easy question. You all know that is clofazamine. Clofazamine is known to cause three main side effects. Can anybody tell me what are those three side effects which you think for uh, clofazamine? Anyone here? I teach this in my class. The three side effects of clofazamine. First is dryness. Patient develops ichthyosis. The skin becomes very dry. And that is what is uh, the most common complaint of leprosy patient when they are on MDT. That their skin is getting too dry. Second very important uh, side effect of clofazamine is 
pigmentation and if you see a patient of leprosy they have a very characteristic hue on them so they have a very darker shade their their face or the exposed part is more dark and the reason for that darkness is the clofazamine which is included in the multi drug therapy the third side effect of clofazamine which you know is intestinal obstruction the third side effect is intestinal obstruction so the anti leprosy medication which causes pigmentation among the options given the best answer to this question is clofazamine okay that is clofazamine great so rifampicin what are the side effects rifampicin you get mainly the reddish discoloration of the body fluid it affects the liver and that is why you always have to do a lft before you start giving rifampicin depson is known to cause drug reaction myth hemoglobinemia ofloxacin it is uh, you know it has its own side effects but the pigmentation is only seen with clofazamine and that is very classical in a leprosy patient so the answer to this question is option number 2 coming to the next question which type of vitiligo is stable now i'm not sure whether this question was there or not but some students told me that uh, there was a question which says that uh, which vitiligo do not show any progression or which vitiligo is stable so i need a quick thumbs up from all my students if this question was there uh, uh, in your exam uh, was it present this particular question i hope i'm audible and visible to all of you uh okay so even if this question was not there let me just tell you the answer vitiligo has a tendency it's an autoimmune t lymphocyte mediated damage to the melanocyte the most uh, you know vitiligo has a tendency for spread in most of the cases we have divided vitiligo in mainly two groups and these two groups are localized vitiligo which includes mucosal focal segmental and acro uh, facial which includes the hands the face and the other group is generalized vitiligo please remember the worst prognosis is obviously generalized vitiligo but the other vitiligo also shows the tendency to spread for example for example acro facial mucosal focal they all have a tendency to spread but the only exception to this is segmental vitiligo segmental vitiligo please remember segmental vitiligo will only spread till that particular dermatome it will never cross beyond that dermatome so if you have a vitiligo lesion over one part of the body it is spreading but after some time it has stopped spreading and if you uh, see that area that is unilateral localized to a dermatome that is your segmental vitiligo okay so the question is uh, the patient initially had a vitiligo lesion which become stable so students are writing that the question the language of the question was that the patient with vitiligo presented with a spreading lesion but later it becomes stable so which of the following can be the possible answer the answer to this question is option number 2 okay so i hope everybody is clear right the answer should be if these are the options uh, the most or the best answer i should say should be the segmental vitiligo okay 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 so instead of a uh, mucosal uh, there was a mixed which is the option even if the mixed was given as the option the answer will still remain segmental because segmental vitiligo will never cross beyond a particular dermatome it will remain to that uh, localized to that particular dermatome and uh, you know like, like the reason why segmental vitiligo do not cross because please remember in segmental vitiligo the main cause of depigmentation is the nerve which is present in that particular dermatome it releases a toxin which kills the melanocyte so only that particular nerve which is supplying that dermatome it releases that toxin and that is why the vitiligo occurs only limited to that particular segment okay now this was the question now actually i think i got the other options also option number 3 for that question was i think chlamydia and one of the option was donovanosis i think these were the option but you can definitely correct me which sti has developed resistance drug resistance so among the options provided the best answer is gonorrhea please remember initially we used to treat gonorrhea very safely with penicillin group of drug but later on what happened glyceria gonorrhea they start getting resistant to penicillin 
and that is why now at break we treat these individuals by the ceftriaxone group of drug we have to give either oral ceftriaxone or ceftriaxone injection if it is widespread so among the stis given in this particular option the correct answer was gonorrhea okay so what are the other option so students are saying that instead of syphilis there was chancroid given in the option even if chancroid is given the answer will remain gonorrhea because gonorrhea is the one nisteria gonorrhea is a, uh, is a bacteria which is getting more and more resistance to the drug nowadays so the answer to this question becomes option number 2 actually this is more of a pharmacology question but because it is a sexually transmitted disease so i am discussing it here and i hope this question uh, will be discussed or must have discussed in the uh, pharmacology classes also pharmacology record also okay now moving to the next question now here exactly what was the question i could not find out but uh, the students told me that there was a match the following type of question where we have to match the disease with their investigation of choice so first option given was the allergic contact dermatitis and i'm sure everybody knows that in allergic contact dermatitis we do a test which is known as patch test what is patch test it is based on type 4 hypersensitivity reaction can you tell me when do you remove the patch if you are applying it uh, in the morning uh, or or if you are applying it uh, today you have to remove the patch on day 2 and you have to read the patch on day 4 so it is 48 hours and 96 hours we remove the patch on 48 hours and we read the patch on 96 hours so this is the first option lupus vulgaris what is lupus vulgaris cutaneous tuberculosis the investigation of choice is skin biopsy and what do you get when you do a biopsy in a patient of lupus lupus vulgaris you get epithelioid granulomas uh, for tinea capitis which is a dermatophyte infection obviously you will uh, do a koh mount and leprosy we have to demonstrate the acid fast bacilli and for that we do a split skin smear so please remember whatever was the options this is the correct match the allergic contact dermatitis patch test lupus vulgaris biopsy tinea capitis koh leprosy slit skin smear so these were some of the questions which i got from dermatology now few students are writing that there is one more question from syphilis can can uh, anybody tell me what was that question do we had any more question from dermatology other than these four or five questions anybody can tell me any other question from syphilis and if there was a question what was the language given in the uh, exam can you just tell me anyone neha ninjas nanda lively okay so i think uh, these were the questions one one question was i think from kaposi sarcoma also uh, not so not not the kaposi sarcoma kawasaki disease there was one question and i think uh this question will be discussed uh, uh by some other faculty but here from dermatology the core five or four questions which we have discussed they only came so i hope this is clear to all of you and i'm sure that you all must have marked it correct because these are very very simple questions if anything you feel uh, i have not mentioned here please write on the chat section so that you know i can make another session which is you know like up to the mark with more questions from dermatology Okay okay so thank you all of you have a nice day and good night bye bye